Also, let's take a look at the notes real quick here while we're looking over some stuff here and finally with a finely tooth comb. Alright, so folks who didn't read or watch any of the PTS stuff here, and you don't you're wondering what's going on and what's coming up in the thing here. Well, we have thing a thing on the uh, forums called PTS patch notes. If you have any questions, you want to know what's coming up, you want to know what the streamers are talking about when they're talking in the streams, they're talking about this stuff here. So, all this stuff here worked on hard by ZOS employees and taking up most of their day probably getting this done here. And has a lot of important kind of stuff here. So let's talk on some of these changes and see how they're going to affect us. Um, simply because we can't really get ourselves into it while we're on the PTS. Uh, so first off, Somerset Zone here, new levels, etc. New Way Shrine here directed. Uh, created a new character tutorial. Uh, we went through that tutorial. It was pretty short. Um, new uh, thing there, etc. New chapter, brand new tutorials with six delves, worker bosses, public dungeons, Soda Hold, and Kamo San. Bills with geysers, which are acting as dolmens now. The new item sets, new outfits, and rewards. So you should order a play um, line. So you're going to get a new timeline or new um, ability thing here using the Sigil Order line, which you can only get with Somerset as well. And you have Cloud Rest Trial with that. And Jeweler Crafting. Again, Jeweler Crafting is a new skill line with craft, um, craft upgrade and research changes rings and necklaces. Note, the skill line um, and Jeweler Crafting stations are only available to players with the new Somerset chapter. But anyone can also craft jewelry made by others. Or can use crafted jewelry made by others. So basically, if you don't get Somerset, you can't craft jewelry. You can borrow or use somebody else's to do it. You But like if it's bound to you, you better have Somerset. Otherwise, you're not upgrading that stuff. So that's all that stuff. New jewelry stats here. We already took a look at these here as well. Arcane, healthy, robust is the ones you know. Tribune or Triune, which increases health, uh, stamina, magic, much like triglyphs do. Um, Harmon or Harmony increase the power of active synergies. I don't know how great that's going to be. I mean, synergies are okay, but they don't, they're not like the bread and butter of most groups. Swift increase your mount, not mount of speed. This is where I was confused on it. said. Not mounted speed, but it didn't say sprint speed, so I don't know if that if, if it applies or not. Infuse, we took a look at. It improves some things, but not all things. I kind of wish they would make it so you can't enchant things with... Or at least give a warning or something like that, saying, like, this is not going to do anything. You're trying to block... You're trying to increase block resistance, or not block resistance, block cost. But it's... It, it just doesn't work with that jewelry set. Like, it should be a little pop-up, I feel. Um, protect, uh, protective, increased physical and spell resistance. That, that one actually is pretty good. Um, if you're just trying to raise up physical and spell resistance, comparatively to the actual armor glyphs, they're better off. Bloodthirsty, increase your damage on low health FOs. I don't know if this is going to be good or bad. I mean, it raises up 20% at gold level on any mobs that are below 25%, but you're gonna be doing execute and have a pretty quick burn regardless. And do you really wanna take that hit because you don't have stamina in your pool? That's gonna be bad. <laughs> yes. Uh, item set, we went over these yesterday. Again, it's nice to go over all these or if you, it, it, just take a day off or take a, like a few minutes off during your day and take a look. Um, new collectibles, public dungeons, precision portals. Again, this is what I was talking about earlier. So, new players are going to have an easier time probably doing some stuff because these portals here can give some items. Basically, this is like, like a treasure chest, but on top of everything else here, in a very rare case, Sigic Portal may contain a single draught of Sigic Ambrosia, which is pretty good. Uh, in addition to that, you get new stuff here with the jewelry stuff. I think this is a really good thing that you probably want to have if you're a new player. Um, it's a skill line that will help you level up, basically. Build with geysers, new houses. So we have a lot of stuff here to look forward to. We have the townhouse. Golden Griffin, Gara, uh, model single room dwelling, and, and in, etc. I didn't see take a look at this here while we were yesterday, because I didn't really know where it was, but I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. Uh, battlegrounds and base game. So battlegrounds are now base game, if you didn't see that already. 
And that makes sense here because guess what? If if they don't get the population higher in there, then it just dies. So moving into base game makes it so everyone has a get way to get in. Um, they've also now added in a multiplier factor for those who are in groups. So two, three, or four groups are going to be put against other people that are two bands or uh, put into kind of shitty groups, I guess, uh, based on that. They still don't have rank matchmaking with this. So, like, if you're, like, top of the leaderboards, you don't fight top of the leaderboard people. And if you're, like, a high level, there's no discrepancy against a low level. So, well, you can go with the, non the non-champion level one there, but that's only until you hit the 50s. Uh, Morrowind and Warden class available on Crown Store. Yeah, yeah. So you can buy it now at Crown Stores. I know a lot of people are upset about that because they're like, what? I had to buy it originally and there, and now they're making it purchasable for crowns? God damn it. So it's, it is what it is. Uh, new motifs. Yep. Sigic, uh, Sepulchre, Fang Lair, and Scale Caller. They're going to be in the thing. So you can look like a Necromancer now. Or Kitty Cat. Oh, no, there's not really many Kitty Cat ones here. Anyway. Uh, new Alliance War Battleground Collectibles. Um, yeah, they're putting these in, so basically you have something you can work for. I was hoping to see more on top of this. Again, like housing stuff, costume stuff, specifically for Battlegrounds and specifically for Cyrodiil to get people in. Like the, the, they do have that like luxury merch in there, but they don't really do much. Uh, new alchemy reagents. I have not seen these. I got to take a look here. But calm gall is an offensive oriented reagent. Well, um, powdered mother of pearl is defensive oriented. We should probably take a look at this because I don't think anyone else has really mentioned this or talked about what this is. So this is going to be something you can make new potions with. So let's take a look to see if we can find that in the uh, thing later. Uh, Crown store gifting. Uh, gift. Oh yeah, this is. Gifting with crown stores, so it's going to be interesting to come in. Available templates, you guys don't care about that. I'm pretty sure you don't care about that. Um, fix an issue, fix an issue, yada yada yada. Bunch of fixes, bugs for bugs stuff that you're waiting for. Da -da -da. Uh, Maelstrom Arena, Motifs, Thieves Guild, Heists. Oh, Heists. Still nothing good in there. Okay, combat. So, I don't really... Okay, I talked to us today about bad and good stuff. I, I'm kind of a mixed for feeling on this here. But basically, rebalance the light and heavy attacks. So, the scale ratios of light and heavy attacks now scale the damage in a way that um, normal attacks do. Uh, Mass Magicka and Stamina now contribute a greater factor to their damage. Well, we already have kind of a boring build with the DK, which is like basically weaving heavy attacks... Doing ability, heavy attack, doing ability. Back and forth, back and forth there. So, I don't know how this great this is going to be. I mean, you can read all this stuff here. and like They're trying to reduce the damage with the light attacks here, but increase the heavy attack. But on the, you know, light attacks with one-handed and, uh, or do wield, I think, is where they're focusing on some of that stuff. Um, adjust the ability to dodge various abilities and item procs. That's not going to be dodge, death stroke, summon shade, ma. Uh, now can, the now can be dodged, yada, yada, yada. And they're adding more AOEs into this. Now, this is good in my opinion here. Honestly, what they need to be, keep on focusing on is any AOEs in general around the character, in front of the character with clonal stuff, etc. It needs to make it so it's undodgeable. If the person's in there, they get hit. It's simple as that they're roll dodging through a hail of arrows it's not like the arrow is specifically aimed at them it's just b bombarding the area it's gonna hit them never really understood that shadow mundus now for scroll damage but it does not affect healing which is gonna annoy some healers i know uh do the high demand of gameplay or the updates uh we're temporarily reducing the respect cost in gold um once the patch goes live so if you guys want to go respec because some of the changes here made, they're giving you something to... They're giving you, like, a chance to do so. 
Um, player abilities, ability change, improve the abilities and morph choices, increase the chances of viability. Basically, they're just raising the bar for some shitty abilities, lowering the bar on some of the really meta abilities. Empower. Okay, this is going to piss off a lot of people. I don't know what to tell you. It's it, it. This makes sense here because they're trying to move away from a game that has gankers one-shotting people and like killing some guy off in like five seconds where you're just like sitting there like what the fuck just hit me here i was right on my horse and died so now instead of just increasing all damage by 20 percent, this is going to increase the damage to your light attack by 40 percent the expectation is that you're going to add it into a rotation you gotta go for your DC trip. Okay, have a good one, hamburger. Be safe. Now I don't know if this is gonna be great. I don't know if empower is gonna be used inside rotations. I think this is good in the sense that you're not gonna see as many gankers going in with mage light before they go in and pounce on somebody. Like there's gonna be there's gonna have to be reason to use some of that there and just. I think that's going to be helpful in general. Like, I've seen too many b um, crit builds on on Night Blades that just rely on the fact they have empower and just glass canning themselves and then rely on Cloak to get away. Like, a Dragonite, which I'm I'm fairly adept with the Dragonite here, but Cauterize uh, increases the healing, the heal from this morph for 28 meters from 15 meters. Doesn't matter, people won't use it. Combat combustion, uh, fix the passive ability now restores, or passive ability is now restores 2,000 or 250 to 500 magicka and or stamina uh, when you apply poison or burning status effects to an enemy. This occur every five seconds here. So, try to remember what this originally was. So, passive uh, now restores 250. I, don't, I think that's good. That's going to be good for sustain here. I'm just trying to remember what combustion used to be. Uh, burning or poison status effects. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, empowering chains now grants you two stacks of empower buff instead of one. That makes sense with the change we made. Um, wait a minute. Empowering buff, two stacks. So you get two light attacks off. You get 40% more damage with those. That doesn't make much sense, I think. But... Whatever. Shifting standard, uh, decrease the morph cost from to 225 from 250 because people aren't using the shifting standard. They're using the might stand might ability. Draconic power, reflective scales. This morph now removes all snare effects and casting ability. That is going to be a good reason to get that abilities for PvP now. Earth Heart, Ash Cloud. This ability now heals your allies and it's, um, snares enemies. Note the eruption war still remains unchanged. This is gonna be this is gonna be fairly good just to make like AoE heals, I think. It's probably not gonna be a breath of life, but get some alternative at least. Cinderstorm, Ash Cloud Morth now um, increases healing done, sure. Obsidian Stone now increases healing done by 25%. Save of shield now grants a meter of mending for 2.5 seconds and no longer grants a strong um, a stronger damage deal at 2,000% here. So I think people are going to go with Igneous here. Over Fragmented, but it's kind of interesting to say that. Shattering Rocks. This morph is now design, redesigned uh, so that when the stun ends, the enemy's next attack heals their target. <laughs> I'm just laughing at that. You get some new player that doesn't understand that mechanic. And you just keep on spamming Shattered Rocks over and over again. Like, you just sit back and you just keep on he having them heal whoever they're fighting. That's it. <laughs> I'm hoping, I'm hoping as well, if Shattered Rocks is a, um... The heal that applies, like... Is it a duration or is it only, like... Like, how does it heal, though? Like, is it... Not duration, but is it, like... How hard they get hit is now he... Is he heal? So, like, somebody hits, like, a truck for, like, 2,000... Or, no, let's, let's give a high number. Like, 10,000 damage. 
Does that mean that now heals for 10,000? That sounds really broken if it is. Alright, let's move on here. I, I'm getting myself down a rabbit hole. Uh, this morph now uh, grants minor ward and minor resolve for Stone Fist. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Or maybe you just do a small hit, maybe a small attack. So instead of doing like a major attack, you have to do a small one. And just remove it. Remember that Shattering Rocks, that effect that they're talking about, can only be when... Like, you can be CC immune. So after you're CC immune, they can't cast that again and keep you locked down. Sorry, having a snack here, but... Anyway. Uh, Nightblade. Nightblade. Oh, Nightblades. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Nightblades. You're going to have to cry a little bit. Not only did we take away your Empower from Mage's Guild, and Empower in general, but we also did this. Dark Cloak. This morph no longer grants invisibility. It instead heals you for 32% of the max health over 3 seconds and grants minor, minor protection to, for the duration. I'm going to let that sink in while I finish this other half. Okay, back. So, oh, what's the kind of play if you're the player? Oh, just hit weak. That's it. That's that's the kind of play I think they, they want. But anyway, Dark Cloak. No longer grants invisibility. How do we feel about that, folks? Are we upset? Are we mad? <laughs> I'm I'm happy about that though. For PvP, I'm I'm ecstatic about that because one of the annoyances I've had with the Nightblades. I'm sorry for all your Nightblade players. I'm not saying that you're bad players. I'm not saying that your class is busted, but it is busted. But no, what I'm saying here is Cloak was one of those abilities out there that is has no counter to it, really. And has been getting broken over and over again by Zoss. I, I put in my 2017 review that Dark Cloak specifically has issues because you can Cloak it works as a dodge it works as a immunity to dots it heals crit heals when you first use it and it, when you have other things like lag and everything else stacked on top of each other cloak is just another ability that just compounds with the issues that you already have the unmorphed version still gives more invisibility but the big thing with this is that the Dark Cloak version, the one that gives the heal, the crit heal, is no longer giving cloak, which is kind of nice because that means the other one is still the other one is still there. You can still get into cloak, but you're not getting on top of it like a major heal when you go into stealth, which is one of the big issues there. Like you you see a, st a guy go into stealth there, and you had no counterplay to get him out of it, and he just instantly get a heal, and when you pull him right back out of it. Regardless, I mean, the people that are right on top of things, finding these guys, they they do that, and then their person's break. The Nightblade's already at, at like 100% when they come out of Cloak again, which is just ridiculous. Like, it shouldn't be that way. So getting rid of Dark Cloak's invisibility and making it more of a heal, a selfie for them with minor protection, I don't think is a bad thing. Like, they still get the ability to, to use it as a rescue, but it's no longer just like a... Oh, I can dodge this, I can get out of this, I can do whatever I want type of thing, like you can with regular cloaks. And on top of it, have a heal. So now they have to make a good choice between getting Dark Cloak or the other morph, so they can actually go invisible. They'll probably go for the other morph for a little while until they until they nerf that too. Uh, Dark Shades, nothing really major. Um, Manifested a tear. Reduce the arming time, yep. 
Path of Darkness. They've been, but they've always been tweaking Path of Darkness. They seem to seem to be getting closer to what they want, though. Shadow Image, uh, target, targets, definitely crush. Uh, morph number friends a thousand percent of the ability cost when the um, enemy dies instead of fifty percent. Yep. Life of things. Yep. Soul siphons. Yada yada yada. Strife. Um, the cost of 270 um, from 1,891. Okay. So that's Night Blades and DKs there. A lot of interesting stuff going on here, but this was a kind of a major one that like triggered me to be like, oh, that is going to be a lot of salty Night Blades there. I didn't see anything that was major here. They're tweaking around more of the Sorcerer below here. Their dark night, their dark magic abilities and their summon abilities, um, you know, reducing the negate damage, uh, negate to like ten seconds there. Um, hardened ward, decreasing morphs um, own damage shield to twenty percent from thirty percent because a lot of people will use it over ad nauseum, but still twenty percent is still kind of big for what it is. Templar, Adric Spears, etc. Piercing Spears, Puncturing Sweep. Um, increase the healing done by this morph by 40% um, of the damage by 30, from 35% here. I felt, I guess they didn't like the way it was reacting. So the Disturbance, yep, yep, yep. Restoring Light, etc. Warden. Uh, they messed around with some of the animal companions and the, uh, the, the damage to them, but I don't know if it's going to make any easier for people going against a warden. The big thing with the wardens is the ability to delay the attack so they all go off at once, which really bursts, like heavily bursts. Uh, grants 10 ultimate when well, I was under 10, 60% health, I need a four second cooldown, that's not a bad thing. You can use that at any type. Um, Deadly Cloak and now reduced by 15% there. Rending Slash um, now applies the movement snare that was expected. All this stuff. Rapid Fire for Toxic Barrage. Um, now grants you crowd control immunity. Um, we're channeling them. So basically they're making this like a um, like a Templar prayer where you just keep on doing the damage and you can't just be blocked off or something else like that um, or interrupted anytime that you're trying to do it. It keeps going and going and going. Uh, Brutal Pounce got a little bit of a nerf. Guild, Silver Leash, nothing really major. Uh, Champion System, Bulwarks. So nothing that, that major on that there. Um, spiked Armor, Tooltip stuff here. Uh, the last thing I'll mention is that... I'll keep on going down here. Itemization, rebalancing here. Okay, there's been a few things that changed here as well that's going to change your best in slot. So before you start thinking your your ultimate build here, pay attention. Master Maelstrom and Asylum two-handed weapons now is required two set pieces. It's just a cosmetic thing here. Archer's Mind, critical, um, now fix critical damage, not critical healing. So basically, they're kind of separating out critical damage and critical healing abilities. And it makes sense because they're trying to make like two different sets to work with. Uh, Coward's Gear uh, now requires you to be sprinting and moving while doing the bonuses instead of just hitting the sprint button and yeeting the bonuses regardless. Uh, Cruel Fury, this item, this item set now works to, um, on damage over time abilities. And not damage over, um, over time procs such as Twin Blade and Blunt. Yep. Earth Guard, this item set heals... Um, Every six seconds, instead of every, um, sorry, this item now heals the same amount over six seconds instead of three seconds. So, spread, spreading it out a little bit, that makes sense. Two people are still going to use it, though. Um, now reduces the amount of stamina cost abilities. Oh, yes, first thing you here. This item set now reduces all stamina cost abilities by 4% instead of stamina recovery for you and your group by 12%. This may make it a, a, a set a set that you want here for this because I want I, I want to take a look at that real quick here. Do I have it? Maybe, maybe not. But yeah, that's gonna change some things here. So if it's four percent to all people in the group, all stamina builds in the group, it's basically like worm cult. 
I think people will go for it. If it's something where it's um, 4% to your abilities, I wouldn't go for it. Because if it's just your abilities, you have other stuff like Marksman. Um, let's see. Marksman. What's the other one? Hawkeye. VO. That reduce stamina, the cost of stamina abilities on their own for just the player anyways. What? No. Get me in. So let's see if it's for the party members here when we get in. Um, Night Mother's Gaze and Sunderflame. This is going to really upset some people here. Uh, but basically they changed the... They changed the physical resistance reduction and changed it over to minor major fracture um, to an enemy when you critical damage them. So the ability that you use, like the, the ability that the tank uses to taunt is now a proc inside Night Mother's Gaze. I don't understand that change at all, really. Like if they were going to tell me it was going to be like a new major major that could stack one on top of the other, maybe that would work, but that's, like, everyone everyone already uses that just to, like, you, just to taunt the boss, you got a major breach put on, or major fracture, too, so I really don't understand why they did that. Uh, Sunder Flame, uh, item says now major breach and main, or sorry, minor breach and minor fracture when you do damage of fully charged heavy attack. And reduce their physical uh, resistance by, instead of reducing their physical resistance by uh, 3,400. They increase the fire damage to kind of make up for it. But honestly, that's just too little too late. That, I mean, if you're adding a major or minor buff instead of giving an actual number, given the way that the atomization system is, people aren't going to go for it because you have too many other passives or abilities that do the same thing. And they're already stacking them. They don't have to set, switch out the sets. <sighs> Lance War PvP. Um, changing a lot of the... Um, the keep... What do you call it? The keep um, costs to it as well. Um, they've made this th new thing where they have like... You know, you go to the keep, you capture it. You go to the surrounding resources and capture those. And if the keep ticks while you're getting those other resources, you get the tick out of it, regardless. Um, the only difference all is that if you go to the keep, you have to now like do something, repair a wall, kill somebody, um, heal somebody that's killing somebody, something supportive. Um, and when you do so as well, you have to stay there waiting for the tick until you kind of push up or go something like that. If you decide to push up, and you're outside of the range of the keep at one point there. You're taking off those leaderboards and you don't necessarily get credit. So that's an interesting concept. I'm interested to see how it will work when implemented. I haven't seen anything really going on in the PTS for any type of fighting though. No Battlegrounds. Um, City of Elites. Daggerfall. Davin's Watch. and Invoke Guard. You have new places you can battle in and all this other stuff here. Keeps are getting more more of a tweak. You're gonna be counting for more. They've had a new quest in here as well, so you can get some of those new costumes. And they're also working on adding things like the alchemy satchels. I really hope that they're gonna put in more um, motif stuff and hopefully more furniture stuff for some of us that don't PvP as much. That can just buy that off those flares that are currently having issues because one of the interesting things here is they're making these costumes so you can trade them with others and that's a good idea it makes it so that people can pvp and get some money back from what they're from what they do but they've got to add more in features issues okay so let's get ourselves back into here now, I wanted to take a look at her scenes. I don't know which character has it, but... Let's see if we can find somebody. Also, it's almost time to get some rest here, guys. Apologize if I'm dragging on a little bit right now.
Also, I haven't seen too many drop with the uh, new patch here. I don't know if it's just because it's low, lower population right what now, but I mean, honestly, my FPS has been pretty solid. I haven't seen a huge amount of like tugs at it in the new areas. Only one or two times. Ah, here it seems. Okay. Reduces cost of stamina abilities by 4% to you and 11 group members in 28 meters of you. Okay. That is going to be... That's probably going to be a good a best in slot, I think. That's basically worm cult. In form of stamina builds. I'm interested to see if that's also going to be 4% less um, to block reduction, too. But yeah, an off tank wearing that, I see it. I think that's going to be, I think that'll be pretty good for him. Anyway, that's pretty much everything that they have there right now that I wanted to highlight out of that. Hope you guys enjoyed that. There's going to be more stuff to test out as well. But hey, guys, tomorrow we're probably going to hit back over to Final Fantasy 15 and take a look at that. We spent two days on PTS just looking at stuff here. Um, I'm